idea that you were going to be home. Now, I knew you were coming in September. I think you start your deputation in September again. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, about mid-September, I'll be home. Yeah. So what are you doing here now? Uh, Stan Russell at Tualatin. They've been investing in Cambodia for the last five and a half years or so with a kind of a 10-year plan. So he just wanted me to be home, to be in the convention, kind of share what's happened in the last five years and talk together about what's going to happen in the next five years. So that's what I'm home for. Cool. Are you freezing? Uh, not now. I have my not, coat on. Not now, yeah. <laughs> What was the temperature like in Cambodia when you left? It's cool season, so it was 92. Yeah, 92. Yeah, yeah that, that's awesome. Yeah. Hey, Ken, give us just a snapshot of where you serve. Obviously, it's Cambodia, but a little, maybe a little more broad. And then your role there, how long you've been there, and a little bit of a glimpse of the spiritual climate in that country. Okay. I'm old now. I'm a veteran missionary. So yeah, we said that. I'll try to remember all those questions. So. Okay. Um, I've been in Cambodia now. This will be my 18th anniversary, believe it or not. One third of my life now. That means I'm 54. But the 27th is the anniversary when Jay Anderson, some other ones came and saw me off at the airport to head on over. So 18 years now. 18 years. Um, I am what they call the country coordinator or moderator in Cambodia and do a lot of different kind of things. But what that means first is I represent AG with the government because it's kind of a communist government with a dictator in the trappings of democracy. Mm. And so you have to have permissions to do some, but at the same time, it's the freest place probably in the world for religion. Mm. That they don't persecute at all, and you, we can do about anything we want as long as you don't talk bad about Buddhism or about the government. Um, and so one of the things I coordinate with them, but that's kind of a small part, but I am the advisor for the national church because our biggest priority was to have a national church that can run things and invest in them. And times are changing. The church is about 23 years old now. Um, in 1990, there were maybe two to 500 Christians alive. In the and country? So in the country, after the Khmer Rouge and the Vietnamese occupation. And they've never really had a lot of Christians, but they pretty much wiped it out. So church history is new. When I got there, were 11 churches connected with Assemblies of God, and now there's about 200 and things, but they're developing and growing, and so advising is changing now, too, because they're doing a lot more and they're maturing. So I do that. I started the National Youth Department and kind of advisor for them and the things that we do with the Youth Department. We have schools with One Child Matters, which used to be Mission of Mercy and oversees some of those. Um, I work and started One Hope, which is used to be Book of Hope, and now it's One Hope because they do lots of things. And... They've been able to get the Word of God into the hands of over a million young people across the country now. Um, when I got there, most people didn't even know the name of Jesus. If you said Yesu, it just meant Grandma Endurance, and they didn't know who Grandma Endurance was. Because <laughs> they are uh, serious, and they had no reference to who Jesus was. But now, because of the Word of God getting out and just God doing things, not only with AG, but with lots of different groups, they're knowing who Jesus is now. And so I work with that and a variety of other things. I teach at the Bible school a lot. The longer I'm then there, the more the changes to doing discipleship. We're less of the evangelism of the planting, more coming alongside, helping church planters get out there, but training in discipleship. That's awesome. So 23 years ago, two to 500 believers. What do they estimate now? Probably about 250,000. So, yeah. And again... AG, but lots of groups are lots there and groups, working together. Course. And part of what I do is coordinate with the other groups too and other denominations. And I'm the head of the um, Bible Society for Cambodia too. So, but we try to work together because it's not AG, it's the kingdom of God. Right. And one thing I might throw in, it's a new day in missions, which most of you know, it's not just America sending missionaries. And so I coordinate those who wish to be coordinated from about 13 different countries. El Salvador is now working with us there through connections I had when I took AIM groups from Oregon down there. Um, we're working with Philippines as our second largest sending, with Korea, with Singapore, with Malaysia, with Australia, with New Zealand, with Canada, um, we, Guatemala. We now have somebody from Bolivia coming. And so it's fun, and I get to coordinate. You learn a lot, though, as you work with Christians from other parts of the world. And as a moderator, you're working with all of these groups. Correct. I am the one that kind of helps them find their way. They all have their bosses from their own countries yeah. and their own directors, but I've been there cool. and relate with them and try to help them to find where God wants them to be, as our real goal is to have a mother church or a strong church in each provincial capital. So I was able to direct the El Salvadorians to go to one. A couple from Sweden that was new and direct them to another one. 
one of our own ones to a place. Grants Pass has been helping with a Cambodian couple that went down to one towards Vietnam. And so that's, that's one so of the cool. fun things, but also challenging because each country has ideas of how to do things and even what a Christian is. Yeah. And so that's a challenge as you have different stances on things as the Korean smokes and talks to me about how fattest Americans are. <laughs> So. Yeah, they called some of us fat, as I recall yeah. last time I was there. Uh, they definitely do that. Well, I'd love to. I'm tempted to just talk because yeah, I want you to think, for 18 of 23 of those 23 years, Ken's been there and able to observe. And what God has done all the way to 250 to thousands of people coming to Christ. It's exciting. You know, in 2015, December of 2015, I brought a group of smaller church pastors from here. In fact, if you're in the room and you went, raise your hand. Real quick. All right. So you can see some of them there. And uh, you graciously, Ken, hosted that trip. And this coming December of 2017, we are going to do another uh, vision trip. Now, while Ken will be here, he's actually going to go back to help lead that trip for us. And uh, we're excited because a group of you are going to get to go with us if you want. I want to, to look at this video. It's a little bit of last time and just a quick announcement for the upcoming trip. So go ahead, guys. So one of our team members, David Kennedy, he's somewhere around here probably with the big camera, took all those pictures, made the video for us, actually was able to go. And David, I want to say thank you for that. And, and uh, yeah, it was exciting. So. so this year, we're going to do the same thing. Ken and I have already talked about this. We're already working on coordinating all of that. And here's how it works. The fifth, first 15 pastors that sign up to go with us on the trip uh, can go. Now, the way you sign up is you have to give a $300 deposit. Now, the trip is about $21 to $2,500, and, uh, but what we're asking of you is that it's going to cost you $800 to go, and the Oregon Ministry Network is going to cover the rest of the cost. We believe in missions, we believe in you, and we want to expose you to something you might not get to be exposed to. Hey, Ken, um, off the top of your head, do you have any idea how many Oregon churches and or building structures, uh, uh, structures, excuse me, in Cambodia from, from our Oregon churches. Would you know that? Uh, or close, approximate? I can guess kind yeah. of, but at least two-thirds of all Assembly of God churches are built from funds that come from Oregon. And so my guess is that probably three or four of the mother churches, the big ones, mm -hmm. and then probably nearly 30 rural churches now, too. Yeah. Um, and so it's been awesome. So you're in dollars have been invested and you'll get to see those dollars at work. You'll get to see how it uh, how it looks. You know, when you go and you feel and taste and smell and experience like this, I'll tell you, it it changes you and it does something in your heart. And I'll let some of this these tem team members tell you what God did to them last year and the endeavor that they have partnered with and the money and what it meant. I mean, talk to some of these pastors that raise their hand. Ask them what God did with missions in their church when they came back after he did it in their own heart. We're excited, and, and by the way, I wanna say this. Uh, in a few minutes, they're going to pass out a flyer. Some people will at your table. There'll be a stack in the back. It gives you all the details, when the monies are due, how that works. We wanna encourage you to talk with your board. Let this be a church project. Let them help send you. And, uh, and we only have open to, 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 to 15, as I said. So we'll have to do that. And the other thing I wanna say is this. We do not announce this trip anywhere but here. So nobody else is going to know about it except the people in the room. And if you're thinking of going and you want to make sure there's a spot, don't tell anybody else. We want to be. <laughs> How's that for a Christian attitude, right? Come on. Here's another exciting thing. 
In the last session tomorrow, we're going to give away a fully paid trip for one of our lead pastors to go and join us. We're going to cover the whole cost. All you have to do is get your passport. And so we don't want to miss that last session. We're doing it the last minute of the last session. And anybody leaves early? Well, it probably was your name. So I don't know. The other thing I want to say is this. If you happen to have went last year, uh, you won't be eligible for this trip unless there are spaces open later. And if there are, you'll still have to pay the full price because we invested last year in that. And uh, so the other thing I would say about it is, is be thinking between now and tomorrow in case you're lucky enough for your name to be drawn. If it were drawn, could you go? Because if for some reason you can't, it would be better to tell us right then and let us draw another name so yes. that somebody can be sure and go, okay? Uh, it's great to be part of a network, I think, that believes that we can do more together than we can on our own. Amen. And uh, we are excited to be part of that. Ken, one last thing you'd like to say? Anything at all? Just, I guess, thank you. Thank yeah. you to everybody. I am a part of this network. It's still hard since I've been gone to call it network instead of district. I know. Because it changed while I was gone. But I got saved yeah. at AG in Albany and have been involved with many of you for lots of years. And yeah. it's amazing, 18 years now. And how many of you, when I see my sheets each month, are faithful month after month after month so that I can be there, learn language, learn culture, and invest in people like you saw up on the screen. Those are people I love that you saw on the screen. And you can't invest unless you're there and able to live. And so thank you so much for making it possible so I can live there and get to share in this country. So. Well, we're glad you and all of our other missionaries here represent us. Thank you, Ken. A lot does change. I mean, you had more hair when you left, too. but uh, Not a lot. Yeah, I was prematurely bald. Oh, you were? Okay. So Bill's becoming more like me, though. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's give him one more hand and then stand and let's go into worship. God's doing good things, isn't he? I, I don't know about you. I'm feeling excited already about what God's doing. So, Well, let's, let's let this time tonight of worship just be a time for you to recharge your batteries. That's really what we're here for. Um, this is an opportunity for you to really just connect with the Lord. So I thought it would be appropriate if we just open in, in, in a word of prayer for, where we all pray together.